Am I the a-hole for showing his spreadsheets of everything I pay for and showing their dad doesn't pay for anything? Okay, I'm getting mixed opinions from this. We have two kids, 13 and 11. I'm not going to lie, we live a pretty frugal life. All the extra money I make goes into their college accounts or fun weekends. Dad has them once a month and is the fun parent. Can't get his child payments in, but willing to do a surprise trip to Kennywood. It's frustrating, all right? I try not to say anything bad about him, but he has been pushing the narrative that without him and the money he gives me, we wouldn't have the home. It's so false. And now the kids are going, well, dad pays for this. My last straw is when the kids told me that it's dad who pays for the home. So I pulled up my budget spreadsheets and includes all the stuff that he pays for. So child support. And he hasn't paid for the past two months. The kids were upset for being lied to. And the oldest got in an argument with him since she called to confirm. We got in an argument and he's calling me a jerk. My friends are split on this and I am wondering if I went too far. Now for the top comments. Not the a The situation sucks. But your ex attacked. You were just defending yourself. So nope. Not the a He is. The data will speak for itself. And that's why Opie's not a hole. If she had gone on the attack and said nasty things about her ex, it would be a little more gray. But all they did was give the kids a basic, factual account of their budget breakdown. So they understood the financial situation and allowed them to form their own thoughts about the subject. This. Kids are old enough for introductory personal finance 101. Will serve them well in future. If he was actually lying and the kids were believing his lies, then absolutely unequivocally not the a-hole. Period. You almost had to do this. He doesn't look bad in their eyes because he exposed them. He looks bad because he lied to begin with and because he created a situation that he lied about. To add to that, the kids deserve to know what they are dealing with in case they ever need support from him in the future. Honestly, this. They will either learn now or they will learn when a kid asks for money for something very important in the future and have their hopes crushed. Better to learn now. Not the a-hole. The truth can hurt sometimes, but the truth is in the facts. As for the back child support you are owed, court order for garnishment would be in order. Working on that. Just want to tag on that my husband stayed quiet about his ex to his kids. He didn't want to say anything negative, didn't want to badmouth her. And that's generally true, but sometimes you gotta say the truth, especially when they're older. He never did. And now there are grown adults who believe that he did nothing to help them and that she was a saint when she was the cheater and want nothing to do with him. Don't make this mistake. Not the a-hole. Next story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to raise my son's child as I raised my daughter's child? I, 57, have two kids, Erica, 24 female and Dave, adopted, 25 male with my husband, Liam, 62. When Erica was 16, she got pregnant and decided to keep her baby. I was very upset, as I felt a child would impact her future and she wasn't thinking of the consequences. However, after having her son, Adam, 8 male, she became more responsible, and my husband helped raise Adam while she did high school and part-time when she completed her degree. She now works and supports herself and Adam. Dave announced recently that he and Anna, 25 female, are expecting their first child, and this caused tension in our family. Erica is my daughter from my first marriage, and is mixed race, while me, Liam, Anna, and Dave are white. Anna went to the same school as my kids, and made comments about both Erica and Adam's heritage, and shaming Erica for being a teen mom. Dave told us that Anna has grown as a person and that she has changed. But Erica refused to be around Anna spending holidays with her mom. Anne was angry that Dave would have a relationship with Anna after what he did. Anna has apologized after that talk. But Erica feels the apology is insincere and too late, but does now attend family events and mostly ignores Anna though will not allow Adam to be near her. I am struggling to balance both relationship with my kids. Anna and Dave recently invited us all to their gender reveal, and I thought this would be a good way to move forward as a family and we all agreed to attend. After the gender reveal, Dave asked Liam and I for our car keys, said he wanted to load some of the baby shower presents in our car. I was confused and asked why. Apparently, both he and Anna thought that like we helped raise Adam, we would help raise their new baby. So they wanted to load our car with some of the diaper slash baby clothes for when we look after our new grandchild. 
We told them no, as we are too old now, and that they are both financially stable to look after the new baby. While we are happy to occasionally help out, they should be responsible for their own child, as they are old enough. Dave said that him and Anna have lots of student debt and can't afford to take time off and need a child care more, as Erica got a single parent grant to help pay tuition. They called me and Liam and Ferris raising a child is expensive now and that we should help out. Dave said we ruined Anna's big day as an expecting mom and that we should have at least said no in private, but thinks that at least for the first few years we should be hands-on grandparents. Dave also accused us of favoring Erica over him, even though we said the situations are both different. I am about to retire, and Liam and I have had plans for years about going back to our home country, which they both know. I would have said I wasn't right here, but even Erica thinks we are being too harsh on Dave and Anna. I'm thinking, what the heck did I just read? If Dave is old enough to not use protection, he sure as heck is old enough to raise his child. Both him and Anna. You are not the all. The situations were vastly different. How could they even expect this of you? Same, Dave and Anna are grown adults who are financially stable and perfectly capable of raising a child as Opie said. I'm sitting here trying to figure out how they justified Opie and husband basically raising their kid in their heads. I don't understand how two 25-year-old adults came to that conclusion. Opie is not a-hole. To add to this, they just assumed. If they really feel that this should be what the grandparents do to be fair, maybe sit down and ask if they'd be willing to do this before packing all the baby things in a grandparent's car. On one level, I'm hoping this is an unplanned pregnancy. Because if it was planned, and they didn't have this discussion before they started trying, it makes them even worse. Wow well entitled. Not a hole. Any of the following reasons are enough on their own. Combined, it's an especially compelling case of not a hole. Eight years have passed since you took on that role to support your daughter, and you're about to retire. David is at a very different stage of life to what Erica was. This also reads as though Erica was a single parent as well as still in school, correct me if I'm wrong, whereas David and Anna will raise their child together as employed humans at the adult variety. You have valid reasons to feel uncomfortable around David's wife, which could possibly complicate the arrangement. They knew you had plans to return to your home country for a period. And the main one? They didn't even ask. They hadn't even discussed how this would work with you. We should have at least said no in private. How about them asking in private? Next story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to try and keep my kids quiet so my sister-in-law could sleep? My sister-in-law, her husband, and their kid currently live with myself, my husband, and our three kids. Their house burnt down, and it's in the process of being rebuilt. They've been here two months. My sister-in-law works overnights three nights a week. Her husband doesn't work. I work from home, and my husband works five to six days a week installing docks. Now, even on the days that sister-in-law doesn't work, she insists that my kids remain quiet and don't make noise at all, because she will insist on sleeping until 4 to 5 p.m. after going to bed at 11 p.m. the night prior. She claims it's because her body can't handle the sleeping schedule, but she refused to switch today's shift. I'm honestly freaking sick of trying to keep my kids quiet, literally all day and most of the afternoon, so she can sleep while I'm trying to work on top of that. My son has ADHD and he is off the walls most of the time, so I'm constantly having to stop what I'm doing, work, to go and correct my kid for having fun in his own house. I told my husband this wasn't working and that we needed to sit down with the sister-in-law and tell her this isn't working out and come up with an alternative. So we sat her down yesterday and basically told her she has three options. Either buy noise-canceling headphones, put a camper in our property and sleep out there, or change her work schedule. Because I will not be telling my kids to be quiet from sunup till sundown anymore. She said she can't sleep with headphones, doesn't want to change her schedule due to the pay deferential, and can't afford a camper. I basically told her those were her options, take it or leave it. Today I did not try to keep my kids quiet. I shouldn't have to in their home. Sister-in-law comes down complaining because she can't sleep, and I pretty much told her tough luck. I gave her options, and she refused all of them. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Beggars can't be choosers. You've taken her in after the fire, which is the decent thing to do, but it is her children's house first, and she needs to remember that. 
Keeping your kids quiet 24/7 for the indefinite future is a non-starter. Besides, when she gets tired enough, she'll sleep. Agreed. Also, some additional things that might help: earplugs and white noise machine. There is a fourth option: they can live somewhere else. And why isn't her husband working? Is he a stay-at-home dad, not a hole? He hasn't worked as long as I've known him, eight years. No reason behind it. I feel like another option, if he's at home too, I'd have him manage the kids, take them to the park, local pool, etc. Nice idea, but let's be real. Any person who remains willfully unemployed after their house burns down and being forced to stay with in-laws is not someone who is going to step up and take an additional parental duties. Info: Is your sister-in-law and her family contributing to your household in the form of rent or anything else? Not that it really matters, because you're right that it's your kids' home and they shouldn't have to be quiet in it all the time. She helps with around two hundred dollars worth of food a month because we eat all meals together. Other than that, no. Definitely not the all. She's pretty much freeloading and trying to dictate the rules here. She can get her own apartment if she wants to control her environment. Otherwise, she's a guest. Last story: Am I the a-hole for expecting to meet my grandchild? My 42 male son, J18, is having a baby with his girlfriend, Kate, 18. I will be honest in saying I don't think they are ready for this. They have been together for less than a year, but she is due in July. Obviously, I know that things happen, so we are doing our best to embrace it. And I'm excited to meet this new little person. Anyways, Kate's family isn't involved. They honestly weren't great parents to begin with. When they found out, they kicked their pregnant 17-year-old to the streets. My son and her were living with me until two weeks ago when they got their first apartment. I'm extremely proud of them. We had a room set up for the baby, but since they got their own place, I let them take all the baby items I purchased. I mean, a fully furnished nursery, and then of course everything from the shower. The baby isn't going to be wanting for much. Well, the baby is breech. They have tried everything to get that baby to turn, but nothing. So they have a C-section scheduled for July 3rd, assuming the baby doesn't flip or she goes into labor. I requested this day off of work and then asked my son and Kate if they would like me to pick them up or if they plan to have my son drive them. My son was confused and told me that he would drive them. Why would I drive them? I told him I was just offering and told him I'd be in the waiting room waiting for her to get out of the surgery. Then Kate jumped in and said they weren't having any visitors at a hospital. She said she needed time to heal, and they wanted to bond with the baby. She said it would just be the two of them and her sister. I'll admit I was pretty taken aback. I mean, I feel like as the grandparent, I'm closer than the aunt, but whatever. I said okay because I didn't want to fight, and said I would be waiting at their house. Kate jumped back in again and said the only visitor they would be having was her older sister. She said she would be in pain, bleeding, and trying to breastfeed, and that she wanted privacy to do that. She also said that I never got my TDAP booster, which I don't need as I had it maybe five years ago when I had to go to the ER for a cut. So I couldn't come until the baby had his first shots or I got the shot. I pointed out to her that if she didn't have a natural birth, that she wouldn't be bleeding and it would just be a surgery recovery. She could stay in the bedroom and relax, and my son could bring her the baby when it's hungry. She told me that nobody was taking her newborn from her. Lots of other things were said and I feel extremely taken advantage of. I sheltered and provided for her and my son when I didn't have to, plus I give to them a lot. And I'll see a lot of other narc tendencies from her, and I feel like it's World War III with my poor boy caught in the middle. I don't feel like an a-hole, but she and my son are saying I am. Am I the a-hole? You absolutely bleed after a C-section first of all. Second of all, you're the a-hole, and it sounds like your poor boy is on his girlfriend's side. Stop taking it so personally. Yep, I bled for five weeks. Five weeks? I am so jealous. I bled for nine to ten weeks. So we get to bleed just like a natural birth but also get the fun of recovering from a hair abdominal surgery at the same time. And of course, the doctor comes into my room just a few hours after delivery, telling me how I'm a good candidate for a VBAC. I'm like, nope, one and done, my good sir. I don't even need to read past the title to know you're the a-hole. However, I did. This is a classic you-owe-me parent behavior. 
Yikes, back off before you do more damage. Right? Good people. I do things to help because I care about my son and his family. OP, I do things to help because I want to guilt my son and his family into catering to my demands. You should have warned them your generosity came with a lot of strings attached. How about you show this new to be mom some respect and privacy while recovering from a life altering event? You're the a